Okay, so we're going to go back to uh, our lecture and uh, discuss maybe a couple of examples to illustrate <coughs> the ideas that we covered in the previous uh, lecture about uh, tolerances and about uh, design factor of safety. So let's look at this example 1.1. So in this example, what we have, if we read it, we have a structure uh, that is uh, has its known uh, loading that uh, is known to plus or minus 20 percent uh, and then for this particular structure we have uh, we know that the load that causes failure is known within plus or minus 15 percent so nominally, the load that causes failure is 2,000 pounds. That's nominal. Uh, then what we want to do is we want to determine the design factor of safety and the maximum allowable load that will offset the absolute uncertainties. So if we think about it, <clears throat> we don't know the maximum load to within plus or minus 20%. So in order for us to be on the safe side, we want to uh, imagine that the uh, maximum load is, is high, higher than what it is. So it should be 1.2 times what it is. And then the load that causes failure is known to plus or minus 15%. So to err on the safe side, we're going to assume that the load that causes failure is actually 85% of what it is. So that's the idea is that the, uh, the actual load is assumed to be the worst 1.2 times. And then the uh, load that causes failure assumes to be the lowest, which is 0.85%. 0.85. So the design factor of safety is the ratio of the load of the, on the structure, that is 1.2, divided by the maximum allowable, which is 85%, which is 0.85. So the ratio, this ratio gives us the design factor of safety of 1.4. Once we know the design safety factor and we're given a nominal load of 2,000, then the maximum allowable load is actually going to be the given load, the 2000 divided by the factor of safety. So if we load the structure with 1400 pounds, uh, the structure will be safe. So that's kind of an example uh, that illustrates the uh, factor of safety. Let's uh, take another example on the idea of safety factor. So in this example, uh, we read it together. We have a rod with a cross-sectional area A and loaded intention uh, with an axial force P equals 2,000 pounds. And it undergoes a stress uh, sigma is axial. So the sigma stress is equal to the load divided by the area. And uh, we're using the material strength of 24K uh, PSI, which is a kilo uh, uh, pounds per square inch and a design factor safety of three. We want to determine the minimum diameter of the solid circular rod. So let's think about it. Uh, the material strength is 24 and the design factor of safety three. It means that we have to knock down the material strength by a factor of three. So the allowable uh, strength that I'm going to be allowed is 24 divided by 3. Right, so we established that. And then the load is 2000. Then we can use it in this equation. We have the, uh, the stress is equal to uh, the load. Uh, P, uh, sigma is equal to P over A. And uh, the area is pi D to the D squared over 4. And uh, that should be equal to uh, the strength divided by the factor of safety, which is 24 divided by 3. And uh, for this calculation, we can calculate the diameter. And the diameter, when I put in the numbers, I find that the diameter is 0.564.
So now the next step is that what to do. Uh, 0.564 inch is not standard. So I have to go to the design table. I have table uh, A17, which gives me the available standard preferred sizes. And I must go on the safe side again. So I go to the larger size. And the larger size that I find the nearest largest larger size is 5 8 which is 0.625. Now the final step is that I'm going to use this diameter and calculate the actual factor of safety, not the one that I used before. The one that I used before is three. Now I'm going to calculate the actual one. And the actual factor of safety n is the S divided by uh, the 24,000 divided by the actual stress that I computed. And the result is going to be 3.68, which is higher than what I started with. So this, that illust this illustrates the uh, process of uh, using the design factor of safety in a calculation. Now let's go to another example that illustrates the idea of tolerances. This is an, an important example. It's simple, but it's important. So if you look at this example, I have a bolt. So this is the, uh, uh, the assembly. I have a, a bolt assembly. So this is the assembly. And uh, the assembly has uh, three cylindrical parts. This one, this one, this one. So these are three parts. And the bolt has to go through the three cylindrical parts before it is attached to uh, something else here. So in the process, I need to make sure that there is a gap W uh, between the assembly and the mating part. That's the idea. Now, let's try to check, check it out <clears throat> if we consider all of the tolerances. So we're given the dimensions. I have the dimension of the entire assembly all the way up to the mating part is A. And then I have uh, the dimensions of the three cylindrical parts as A, as B and C and D. And each one is given as a mean value. For example, if I say A mean is equal to 1.75, this is the mean value of the distance A. And then I have a tolerance T for this A. This tolerance is equal to 0 0.003, plus or minus. Uh, it's like a, you have a Gaussian distribution with the standard deviation. And uh, let's now uh, think about what's, what's needed. We wanted to estimate the mean value so we want to estimate the mean and the tolerance the, uh, on the gap W. So we want to estimate this, uh, the mean value of W. I can find it by subtracting B, C, D from A, like the sum of these three from A. Uh, of course, each one has a plus or minus. So what do I subtract? In case I'm looking for the means, I just subtract directly the mean. So that's easy. So I can find the mean value of W. And we're done with this. Uh, next is uh, I want to find the basic value of D. So I, let's say I want to make sure that I have a gap to the mating part. So how do, I, how do I do that? I have to adjust the value of D uh, from the given, so the given is like here, it has a mean value of 0.875. I have to make it a little bit smaller so that I guarantee that there is always a gap. So in order for me to do that, then I have to rework the problem. So first, we, the first step that we have is the mean value of W is just subtraction of all of the means and we get uh, 5 mils as the mean value of the gap. However, the tolerance in the gap, it is a statistical tolerance 
So in statistics, if we have standard deviations, we're going to add them all together to get this the overall standard deviation. So T, the tolerance in W, would be the summation of all of the tolerances, and that gives me uh, 10 mils. So in essence, I have the gap W is 5 mils plus or minus 10 mils. So it is on the mean, on the average, it will be 5 mils, but then it can be 15 or it can be minus 5. And that's the case here. Uh, if we get the minimum value, it will give us really an interference. The maximum value will give us a clearance. All right. So that's not so good. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's a gap. And the gap is a given value. The minimum is uh, 3 mils. That's the requirement for the design. Therefore, I have to work it backwards. Then I say, what is the mean value of W that guarantees this minimum? The mean value of W that guarantees the minimum is the minimum plus the tolerance. And, uh, and therefore, I have 3 mils plus 10 mils. It gives me 13 mils. Therefore, the mean value of W, this is a new problem now that I'm working on, a, a new problem in, in which the mean value of W is not 5 mils. It's now on a computer so that I don't cause any interference. And in this case, it is 13 mils. And once I figure out the mean value, then I can work backwards to find the mean value of D by normal subtraction. And I get D equals 0.867, which is compared to before 0.875 it means that I have to manufacture or machine uh, the cylinder D so that this value here, 0.875, is actually 0.867 as we computed in, uh, in this part of the problem in here. So this uh, illustrates actually uh, the uh, second example uh, in which we computed uh, the gap uh, from the given uh, tolerances. Now let's uh, let me talk about uh, finally the project or the requirements for the project. So uh, in this case, I go back here and uh, discuss what are what is the project that we would like to have. Uh, in our, um, let me just add a uh, page here. And uh, write down uh, what is required from you from the project or the grading scheme. So for this class, the grading scheme is as follows. What we will do is we will have homework assignments. And uh, the assignments will be on the order of six to seven assignments. And um, we will have 15% of the grade given to the homework. And then in addition to that, we're going to have a project. And I'll tell you more about the project uh, and the project is going to be 25% of the grade and it will involve a design process. So 25 and uh, 15, that gives me 40%. Uh, the remaining 60% is that we're going to have a midterm. And the midterm is going to be 20%. And then the final is going to give me 40%. So if you add all of this up, then you find that we have 100% for the class. Uh, so now I think you understand what is required from you in the class. We want to talk a little bit about the project and what it entails. And um, I'll describe it just briefly here.